Hello, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Ashley McLaughlin, Managing Director for the LPGA Women's Network, and I'm joined here with a distinguished panel, executives from the LPGA Women's Network's founding partners. The LPGA Women's Network is a new online community designed to inspire and engage women with the game of golf and to create a more welcoming and inviting environment um, in the golf industry for female amateurs. We're excited to have you all join us today and talk about um, something that you're all, your businesses are all experts and thought leaders in, the space of diversity and inclusion, an area where here at the LPGA, we also want to be at the forefront of and making golf a more welcoming environment for the female amateur. I'm going to introduce our distinguished panel. I'll start with Lee Hieronima um, with Dow. Lee is the Commercial Director for Olympic Sports and Solutions in North America. Welcome and thanks for joining us. Thank you. Sue Townsend from KPMG, who's a partner and chief diversity officer. Uh, Eileen Welly from uh, Excel Catlin, the executive vice president and chief human resources officer. And Cesar Sanchez, manager of sports marketing for Kia Motors America. Thank you all for joining us and engaging in this conversation with us today. Obviously, inclusion and diversity is an important topic in many industry, industries, in golf in particular. Um, the LPGA Women's Network is really developed to help bring more women to the game of golf. And so I'd like to start with the ladies on the panel. Um, tell us a little bit about your experience with the game of golf. How did you get it started? What inspired you to pick up the game? Well, you know, really following along the theme of invitation, um, I started golfing right out of college when I joined the firm. So starting at KPMG 31 years ago, I was invited to play golf and I had never played before. Um, but yet I had family members who played. And so I started, I realized that it could become a business tool at that point in my life. And so I just learned with family members um, and started working with some of the PGA teaching pros at a nearby driving range. And I found that it was just such a wonderful way to connect with both my colleagues because we were doing annual golf tournaments at the firm, um, as well as connecting with my clients, but not until I got enough confidence to actually be able to um, know that I could get around a course. Right. Um, I've always loved scrambles because they work so much better for my game. Um, <laughs> but, but that connection is just, it's such a, a different way to develop relationships with people because you're spending, you know, depending on how, you know, nine holes or 12 or 18 holes, you know, up to four hours with them on a course, um, talking about life and business and everything and, and developing a special bond that you frankly don't get when you're just in an office or in a meeting. Absolutely, and a lot of those benefits to playing the game of golf are important for women in particular, particularly if they're Absolutely. in business. Tell me a little bit about the intimidation factor. How did you break that down at the beginning stages? Well, I was lucky enough to be playing with some of the my colleagues, the young men, who were also not great golfers. So it wasn't like I was going out and um, you know playing with people who had a five handicap. Mm -hmm. um, and once I realized that, then the intimidation factor went away. Because what, what I learned very early on is that uh, a guy who's picked up a golf club once says, I'm a golfer. Mm -hmm. You know, where a girl's <laughs> like, oh, I don't golf. <laughs> and, and yet, and that's what I try to encourage our young woman to do. Once, right. you, once you've learned the game, learned the rules, learned how to hold a club, mm -hmm. hold a club then you're a golfer. Absolutely. And, um, most of the men score just as bad as I do. Absolutely, and you know what, a lot <laughs> of that translates into the business world as That's well. Right. When it comes time for a woman to step up and take a leadership role, those same sort of barriers in their confidence are what right. make them a little hesitant to do so. Eileen, tell us a little bit about your experience with the game of golf and how you, what inspired you to play? So I learned to play uh, as a, really as a young adult socially. So we had a group of friends, we lived in Houston, Texas. They all played golf and they, sort of urged me to get out there and play. Um, a little bit different experience probably. I was always the worst golfer in the group. And uh, once I had children, that became my excuse to not you know, play too much. But as my career grew, I did play mostly in scrambles, um, you know, praying that I would have a shot that they could use since that was <laughs> one of the rules. <laughs> but I'm probably one of those women that, you know, it, because I, c I feel very accomplished in a lot of other ways, not being a good golfer at some point led me to say, yeah, I don't really play anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I constantly think about, should I start again? My husband plays not very often though. 
And so I think as I look at women coming up, there's no question in my mind that if you play golf, and again, you're right, you don't have to be perfect, mm -hmm. as so many of us think we need to be, um, but you know the rules, you understand it, you can talk the game, you're, you know, that's all it really takes to get out there. And most men, not all, but most men accept that, and you're missing something if you sort of bow out. Mm -hmm. when, it, when invited, you should accept. And I actually talked to a woman today who said, I invite myself now. She's that confident. That's great. And that's really, I think, what our goal should be. Right. Mm -hmm. Just empowering women to step yeah. up and say, you know what, I don't have to be perfect at this, but I right. can take a swing, I can give it a try, and I can have just as much fun as the guys are having out there, too. Yeah. 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 It's wonderful. It's such a fun way to spend the day. Absolutely. It is. And, yeah. and Lee and Caesar, I know you both, like the rest of us, are golf dabblers. Um, from your perspective, your uh, company's partnership with the LPGA and the LPGA Women's Network, why is it important for you, for your companies, to be partnering with a women's sports organization in particular? Yeah, you know, I think for, for Kia Motors of America, the, the biggest thing, like I mentioned earlier, was the, the passion of, of, of golfers, whether they're female uh, or male, uh, and, and tapping into that passion. And, and, you know, we're excited to partner with the LPGA and extend our partnerships into the Women's Network because, you know, we know it's growing. You know, our, our numbers have grown in uh, with the, the female audience of our uh, vehicle buyers. And we look at this as an opportunity to tap into that market and that audience that, you know, may not know our brand. And, you know, we've been a partner with, with the LPGA, I think going on eight years as an official marketing partner. We have the Kia Classic. We're, we're, start, we're going to our ninth year. So we have a long history there. It's, it's worked for us. And, and for us is really, you know, getting excited with the LPGA and this new venture and, and tapping into uh, the right people and continue to network really with, with both the amateur and, and uh, people who are, might be so-called professional golfers. Mm -hmm. um, Aren't we all? <laughs> exactly. And, uh, and again, just having fun with it and, and, and creating those experiences uh, that we feel we can create with, uh, with our brand as well. Absolutely, we're excited about that too. You yeah, mean? for now, we've been involved with golf for a, a long time, and so we sell a lot of products into the golf industry. Being associated with the network allows us to take all the work we've done in the diversity and inclusion and help advance that into a broader society. So being able to use the experience to help career advice and advancement for our members will also be a significant help for us. Absolutely, and what's interesting to me is that Dow, in terms of the sports space, you sponsor the Olympics, NASCAR, and now the LPGA, which is a yeah. pretty incredible statement to be making. So we're pretty excited about all of your partnership here with us today. Um, and you all are, do some great work in the diversity and inclusion space. I'd love to hear in your, you know, your thoughts what you think the golf industry could be doing better to make the space more welcoming for the female amateur. Anyone want to take a stab at that question? I mean, uh, I'll start. I think you guys are doing a fantastic job. Uh, we love our partnership with the LPGA um, and the PGA both. It is, it's so important because things like Golf 101 mm -hmm. um, and this women's network, it's creating a, you know, vehicles for us to encourage our women to use golf as a business tool, business and social. But for, from my perspective, I want all of our women um, using it because it's just another one of those tools in their tool belt, right? As Absolutely. they think about how they're developing strategic relationships with clients, how they're getting involved in their communities and, and being able to have that connection to be able to learn the game, to be able to, you know, learn from their desk now mm -hmm. with the videos and other things. I think that's, that those are the kind of things that um, I can get our networks involved with, so our network of women, you know, they, you know, we can set up events, we can get them involved. And, and to me, that drives um, that awareness and opportunity to be able to build a skill that's gonna help them be more successful in business. Absolutely, absolutely. So. Anyone else that wanna take I that I would question? say the, the connect and inspire piece, right? So mm -hmm. being able to, you know, communicate out to the broader audience to share the experience with golf and how it can help advance you socially and from a career standpoint is important. So. Again, the connection piece, and then also helping the, the players grow, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we're so excited about, just a, along the topics of diversity, is you know it's such an important thing to implement 
inside an organization for innovation. Mm -hmm. And so being able to work with companies like yourself who are leaders in your industry um, and work together and collaborate, I think this is something that could be really powerful for the women's game, just sort of collaborating on some initiatives that are gonna grow at long term. And the women are so good. If, you know, when I get our young women who aren't golfers out, particularly if they come to the tournament we sponsor, mm -hmm they see those women playing and it's just amazing to watch them. And I think that really inspires um, them to get involved as well. Absolutely. So we gotta get them on the course during the tournaments. That, that's the first step, right? Yeah. It's breaking down those barriers. You can do it, you can play. It's not as hard yeah. as you think it is and it's actually pretty fun. Um, so I'd love to give everyone an opportunity to share a little bit about what you're excited about in terms of this partnership. So what's on the horizon? This is a new um, platform for the LPGA. We're in a digital space. I know Kia, you're known for your innovation and um, really unique marketing strategies. What excites you about um, you utilizing a digital platform to reach women in this space. Yeah, we, you know, we have a, a CEO who's very excited about what digital and social can do for us, and he's always challenging us on how we can grow those channels and those audiences, and I think this is a perfect opportunity, taking what we do on the golf course and taking what we do when we bring out our vehicle displays and, and have people interact with the cars and really learn about our product. Um, this is another example of how we can just take it a, a, a step further and say, here's another channel where could probably reach a, a, a big audience that we probably haven't tapped into. And, you know, again, knowing that the LPJ is fully behind this and is a, is a passion point, it's easy, it's an easy sell for us to get involved. Um, you know, we're always trying to uh, maximize what we do uh, at every single event and with every uh, partnership that we have. And, and this is a perfect example of, of something that's going to allow us to do that. Um, again, socially, digitally, but at the same time, bringing people out, hopefully, to the golf course to play more games and inter interact with our product. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the digital component is huge, particularly for reaching a large and different audience. Face-to-face um, -face is also super important, particularly for women, right? It's all about community building, having that face-to-face -face engagement, networking and meeting people, which is what makes, I think, um, this community, in, in addition to our alliance with the EWJ, so mm -hmm. special. Um, being able to partner with you all to create events for women to connect online, then meet together and really reinforce those relationships will be, will be pretty tremendous. Okay. Um, do you have something you want to say? Well, so we're just, for KPMG, women's mm -hmm. leadership is such an important topic. It's something we're so focused on. And uh, this relationship, the partnership, is really just another platform for us to, to help, you know, give a voice for um, some of the amazing uh, leaders that we've had speaking at our KPMG Women's Leadership Summit. Right. Um, they can share their stories um, on the network because as we think about um, building women leaders, it's both on and off the golf course. Absolutely. So, Extended you know, relationship. E exactly. Important. So being able to, you know, connect digitally with women across the network and, and highlight, again, some of the leaders who are outside of KPMG that right. are, have worked with us on the Women's Leadership Summit, as well as our own leaders. Uh, we just, we're really excited about being able to do that. Absolutely. So being able to inspire mm -hmm. women first Absolutely. is the first step, but then connecting with them with somebody on the ground to sort of hold their hand and lead them al along the way, both in golf and professionally as well, is, is pretty critical. Right. They go hand in hand. Yeah, absolutely. Which actually leads me to a great question, and I'd like to get a little personal for a minute, if you don't mind, um, speaking in terms of mentorship. I'm sh that's an important piece of the puzzle when it comes to creating an inclusive environment that's welcoming, where people feel compelled to connect and engage with one another. Um, did you all in your professional careers have a mentor or a sponsor, someone who helped you get to your current position um, professionally? Tell us a little bit about that relationship. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't have just one. I think um, I've had a number of sponsors in my life, which has been awesome. And I, I would distinguish between mentors and sponsors mm -hmm. uh, because I've had sponsors and those are people who are literally in a position to get you to the next place mm -hmm. if you can prove yourself. And uh, I had uh, a gentleman in particular at GE. I worked for him three different times. He, I think he saw things in me that I didn't see in myself and um, really helped me to sort of understand what I wanted to be as a as a head of HR someday, right? So, uh, and he helped me along the way and made sure that I got exposure, all those kinds of things. The mentoring piece 
has come in so many different ways. And for me, mentoring is about, you know, I'm a, a working mom, and so maybe I want to tap into my network of other working moms mm -hmm. to get some help. I'm a human resources professional, and so how do I tap into that? Or I'm now in a big global business and want to understand better different cultures. And each, I, I would say I've had so many different mentors who've been able to and willing to share their advice, their experience, and just lend a helping hand along the way. And the one final thing to say is that the power of a women's network is where you can make so many of those connections, which is why we're so happy to be a, a sponsor for your women's network. Starting off digitally, you can reach so many people. Right. And then those connections can become face-to-face uh, -face connections right. or telephonic connections. Yeah. And the world is open if, if you can connect digitally and, and really leverage as well. Absolutely, this event yeah. is a great example of, of yeah. that at the PGA show. There's you know a small network yeah. of women who work in this industry, and when we do get together, you know we connect a lot online. But it's a, it's a real personal thing yeah. when when you actually get together face to face. Within Dow, we're fortunate to have leaders who get involved with their employee development. Right, so it's a partnership between an employee and their people leader to sit down and do an employee development plan to understand what that individual, what their aspirations are, where they have gaps and kind of help fill those gaps and then make the connections to get them you know, to that next level. We also have employee resource groups. Um, WIN is one of those and we invite outside parties to come in, right? So you don't have to be a woman to be part of WIN within Dow. We want to make sure that we you know, invite others to go and join those networks and then that helps us continue that, that whole network and grow opportunity for them. That's great. And I know that leads me to a great topic because I know, Dow, you have a pretty robust program in place for fostering a diverse and inclusive environment, both internally in addition to some of the vendors that you work with. And Eileen and Sue, I know you both have a little bit of a human resources background, so I'd love to ask you, um, from a company perspective, what are some things that you all do or have seen to be successful um, in terms of fostering that culture inside your business? Well, I mean, so we view diversity and inclusion as a strategic business imperative. And so it's, it's really, we look at it from two different angles. Um, the first is about our culture and how do we make sure that we're doing the things we need to do to ensure our culture is inclusive. Um, our women's network and our other networks are very important, but it's important that the men are involved and engaged. Right, so right. we do a lot of things focused on our culture and on all of our professionals and then from the side of our women, we do a lot to make sure that they're raising their hand, that they're mm -hmm. really seeking out mentors and sponsors. And right. um, when a door's open for them, they're running through it. Right. Um, so it's it's really focusing on both because we know that, you know, to your point earlier, the more inclusive we are, the more innovative we will be because you're bringing diverse perspectives to the table. Mm -hmm. And you know, our goal is to bring the best solutions to our clients. Um, and so having a diverse team, we really feel does that much better. Absolutely, that's a great point. Yeah, so at Excel Catlin, we've sort of doubled down on diversity and inclusion in the last few years with a strong emphasis on getting more women into leadership roles. And so we actually have been very, very clear about that goal and we're measuring that goal. And we've also looked at what we think some of the levers are that will enable it. So we're doing some things around um, really modernizing our family leave policies mm -hmm. and making sure that um, when someone has a baby, it might be a woman, it might be a same-sex couple, whatever, that they are going to get paid leave, right? And so we've, we've upped that. When someone has to care for a family member, um, that they get more than the, you know, the couple of days that, that that the leave policy will allow them. So we've really modernized our leave policies globally. We've really pushed flexible work arrangements globally. Mm -hmm. And we are, you know, and those are some of the tools that we're using. We, we insist on diverse slates for every single job that's open uh, at a leadership level. It must be diverse as defined by at least one woman is interviewed by a decision maker. So mm -hmm. those are the things that we're trying to be we're not trying to be all things to everyone, and that's um, not always the most popular thing because we're very, very clear in what we're measuring. 
We're also working, though, as Sue said, on inclusion. And so if you have an inclusive environment where everyone feels valued and welcome, then it's going to beget diversity. It's just right. going to enable greater diversity. So yeah. it's kind of a, 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 a two-tiered sort of uh, or two-pronged approach in these early days. And um, we, we feel good about it, which is why LPGA comes in yeah, as an awesome partner. Yeah, <laughs> and you've hit on a great point. It's, it's the feeling valued and welcome. Yes. It seems like that is the key that opens up the doors for everybody. For everyone. In. Absolutely. Yes. And, and that brings me to, you know, just how excited we are to be partnering with each of you because, um, you know, you are the leaders, the thought leaders in this space, and uh, there's so much that we can do for golf to make women feel value, valued and welcome in this space. Um, one of the things that we do, a little fun thing that we do to wrap up every interview with the LPGA Women's Network is we ask our um, interviewees to share a little bit about what their perfect golf day would look like. So <laughs> that's who you might be playing with, where you're playing, maybe what you're wearing, what the day is like. Um, just think a little bit about it. I'll share mine. Okay. Um, I would be playing with Oprah Winfrey, probably uh, Michelle Obama. We'd be playing at Pebble Beach, oh. and we'd start at about 10 a.m., which is a, a good time for me in the mornings. And uh, we'd have uh, probably Stedman, you know, carrying the bags, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, I'd be playing really well. Yes, <laughs> yes, I'd be playing really well and teaching Oprah mm -hmm. and Michelle the ropes. And uh, yeah, it would be a great day. We'd end the day with cocktails and. Uh, chit-chatting would be fun all right who wants to go first I, I can I just mm -hmm. tell you that if I could join your foursome yes that's, you're more than then welcome I, then I'm good that's you my are answer valued and welcome to join our foursome <laughs> excellent does anyone else want to share their perfect golf day yeah, I, I guess I'll start you know yeah. I, I grew up in the in the time when Tiger Woods was coming up oh and, yeah and, uh, uh, where I came from that was a, it was a pretty big deal right and uh, obviously he still is um, but just that, that name um, you know, resonates with me, and it's somebody that uh, did a lot for the game of golf, mm -hmm. uh, for those underprivileged communities, people of color, uh, brought a lot of opportunity. And, and growing up, I didn't really play golf. I, I started late in my career, um, but I always did look at those Hispanic surnames, right? The Nancy Lopez's of the world, mm -hmm. the Billy Trevino's, and although I didn't play, I saw those names, and uh, again, the inspiration, right, that you try to pull from, from people that have done it. Uh, for me, it, it meant a lot, right? Because it meant that I could probably do anything that I wanted to do mm -hmm. without feeling like I didn't fit in, or I didn't play as well, or I, I couldn't do something. Um, it, you know, you, you draw from that. So seeing the, the success that he had was, was vital to the confidence that you need, especially for a game like, like golf. Absolutely. So he'd be in it, and then I'd, I'd have probably my cousin who was a big time golfer and a big, big time fan. and. Yeah, I was showing some of the guys that uh, that I had dinner with last night some of the videos of his kids playing. So I, th I think just being able to give back um, uh, and, and spend time with, with people, we're talking about the business side of it as well, but you can't lose sight of the fact that uh, you try to you know, find those values, uh, whether it's at work ethic and commitment, talk about four hour days, right? <laughs> um, you know, being able to have that one person maybe teach us all a little bit something about the game of golf, I think that would, wherever the setting would be, I know there's a lot of lovely places and had the chance to be at a lot of golf uh, tournaments uh, as, a, as a, a sponsor, I think anywhere would be, would be fantastic with the right people. Love it, Tiger Woods yeah. is a good selection. Tiger and family, mm -hmm. gotta love it. Yeah, I feel like I've lived my perfect golf day so yeah. many times already because of the opportunity to play in some of the pro-ams. Oh, that's right. But I, but I, pro -am. I have <laughs> to say, you know, playing with Stacy Lewis oh. is just, She's I get to, I get such a great story. She's so such a wonderful ambassador yeah. for us for KPMG, and so playing with her and her swing coach Joe Hallett, uh, because <laughs> every time I get a tip from him, yeah, my game yeah. gets better. Nice. Um, and to round it out, it would definitely be my dad mm. because he's been gone for about five years, and he was a golfer, yeah. um, and I never had a chance to play with him. So I think if I had him, Stacy, and Joe, and we were playing maybe at Princeville and Kauai. It'd Good be choice. a yeah. really perfect day. Yeah, it can't be bad. <laughs> Love that. How about you, Heath? For me, it, it could be any course, but um, I play with my son and my daughter once a week. We usually go out on Sundays. My daughter's 15. She just started the golf this last year, and so it's every time to go out and see her get that thrill, that, that one or two good hits, that just <laughs> she's excited, and that's what brings her back. So 
those are the times that I enjoy. I love that. We'll have to get her in the LPGA leadership. We'll work on that. Fantastic. There's always one that brings you back, right? <laughs> the one shot. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what it is. It's the bug. Well, thank you all again so much for your partnership, your support, and for joining us today on our panel. I had really enjoyed our discussion and I'm excited about our partnership in the coming years. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, if you haven't yet joined the LPGA Women's Network, be sure to do so at lpgawomensnetwork.com.